Can you both share a little bit about what for, what forgiveness doesn't look like? You know, one of the things that people can do very easily is they can hold a grudge. You know, when somebody is forgiving somebody else, it means to release a debt. The, uh, the concept of forgiveness is, is to release a debt that is owed to you, rightfully owed to you. That's why Jesus would say for us in the prayer, Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts as we forgive or also forgive our debtors. Because a debtor owes me something. And so I owe God something as a sinner. You know, I have broken his commandments and, and I am basically in debt to him. And so I'm asking God, forgive me my debts. You know, forgive me, wipe away the, the slate of obligations. You know, and he does that by his grace. But if I've received his grace, then I am supposed to extend his grace to somebody else. And so forgiveness is, go is going to affect at least two people. Mm -hmm. It'll affect me, the one who is uh, forgiving, and two, the one who's being forgiven. So it always affects at least the two people. What I'm supposed to do is stand ready to release the debt. I'm to be in that attitude of quick forgiveness or willingness at least to do that. So when I do forgive, I'm release of my own pressures. I don't carry that any longer. I'm not bearing that burden anymore of unforgiveness. And so uh, what, it, what it looks like is freedom. It looks like peace and, and, and joy and reestablished relationships and things like that. That's what forgiveness looks like. And, 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 and for me, it's the sense of uh, being released from the um, the pressure because you know how it is when you're upset at somebody and and there hasn't been any kind of confession or any kind of uh, restitution or or just asking for or giving of the of uh, forgiveness uh, there's just that tension between you and that person the unspoken tension sometimes that it may not be uh, openly stated but it's most certainly experienced you know there's that that sense of dread to see that person or that withdrawing of yourself because you don't trust them because when somebody's hurt you, you don't trust them. So you're no longer extending the grace and the kindness or, you know, the relational things that at one time had been part of that, that, uh, that unity of hearts. And so forgiveness is a very important aspect in Christianity because we know of all people God needs to forgive us. We need yeah. God's forgiveness, I should say. And two, when we receive that, then that which I've received, I can give unto you. I can give to someone else, which is uh, simply what I've received myself. So I give what I've gotten. And in marriage and in friendships and relationships, um, I, I feel that that is, especially in marriage, a very important aspect of it. Because we hurt each other, whether it's in a word or whether it's an action or an attitude, we can hurt each other, we can injure each other. And so if I say to my wife, honey, I, I, I'm, I truly am sorry. I didn't intend to do it. And, and, and acknowledge that I did that instead of dancing around and trying to blame set and trying to give all the reasons why I did that to justify it. If I take ownership of it and I say, you know, what we used to say when I was growing up in the Latin was mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, my fault, my fault, my most grievous fault. It's, it's a sense of personal accountability and responsibility. And when a man or a woman in a relationship especially can say, baby, I'm sorry, I hurt you, not if I hurt you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. we'll say, well, if I hurt you, because that puts the blame on her. You know, I'm subtly shifting it to you. Well, you're the one hurt, and therefore, if you're hurt, I didn't intend to, I wasn't the bad person. No, I hurt you. I take responsibility for hurting you, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for doing that, I really am. And it's been said in, in marriage, um, I was wrong, I'm sorry, is probably amongst the hardest words to form, uh, especially because of our pride and our reluctance to admit that that we can harm others. And so in marriage, I have discovered that to be, be willing to, to love my girl enough to 
to say, I have hurt you, and I am sorry, and to truly repent has been very important. You know, one of the things that you mentioned, and I think it's so hard sometimes for people to let go is when they've been hurt or they've forgiveness needs to take place in the marriage or any relationship, when that person is, the other person's asking for forgiveness, there can be a tendency for the other person not to forgive. They let that tension fester and they let it grow and it becomes bitterness. And then, and then it just becomes this ugly looking thing in the marriage, you know? And, and so how do you guard against that? For me, um, that's why we need to immediately tell one another that we, we forgive them. And, um, because if you, if you hold on to something, it, it will fester. And that's all you're going to be thinking about. We have to let go of some of those things that we've been hurt by. And that's giving it to the Lord. And if God forgave us, you know, a sinner, why, why, why we are to forgive those who hurt against us? That's, that's part of the Christian um, life. Is, is, is to pour out forgiveness on others. And uh, because we are wretched, you know, we're wretched people. Again, God loved us so much that he died for us. And we too need to die for one another and, and, and say, hey, I'm sorry. Hey, I hurt you. Um, that's, that's the Christian, that's, that's what defines Christianity, is the love for one another in spite of our in spite of ourself uh, we can we can we have that love and we can extend it to others and that's what we should be doing you know it's important uh, as you both mentioned the quickness the, to to forgive it it's uh, lord's always quick to forgive our sin our wrongdoings and and for the and for the in the relationship the quickness i think you both have mentioned is so important mm -hmm. in forgiving so let me ask you both. So why is it so hard to forgive? I think it's our flesh. Yeah, I, I, I would. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's and, the and, answer. Yeah, that's the, it's the, the, it's the, the flesh. It's flesh. <laughs> is it because the flesh just wants to hang on to? I mean, I think about that. I, even in times in my wife's, I'm sure because you guys know I'm perfect, right? And my, and so if any forgiveness <laughs> has to take place, my wife is always asking me. And so, uh, because you guys know. That's why she's such a saint. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> but even in, in within our marriage, you know, my wife, for whatever reason, my wife may ask, may say, will you please forgive me? And at first, you know, I want to, I want to put my heels in and, uh, uh, you know, and, and sometimes it's a difficult thing. And, uh, and I've learned that I need to die to that, you know, because just as quick as Christ has forgiven me, I also must forgive. I think part of the problem is, John, is that we like to, we like to cause other people pain because they cause us pain, mm. and so we want to see them hurt a little bit because they hurt us, and sometimes we're not satisfied because we don't think that they've hurt enough, mm. because our self righteousness mm -hmm. and self importance, our narcissism, sometimes gets the, the best of us, so we become God, you know, you've sinned against me, and therefore, I will not release this until you pay for it with your pound of flesh or whatever, you know? And so I, I, I think that has a lot to do with it. When, when I'm hurt or injured by somebody, um, I'm not always quick to say, that's okay, you know? But I think part of that is because I'm not sure whether they really are actually apologizing, which they, if they are actually telling me that they truly are sorry and i think something like that can can um can motivate me well and i'm his being his wife and if somebody's hurt him well i can hold a grudge right. because of the fact that that he's been hurt and and i have i too i have i you know i have to go before the lord i've had to go before the lord many times and say lord forgive me this is a child of God mm. we're dealing with, right. and and yet um, um, you do want to hold. Sometimes you feel that you you should just hold on to the grudge because, after all, 
that person may deserve it. Right. And right. and not and that's wrong. That's that's wrong. Like I said, if the Lord forgave me, then I must forgive others. Which is can be very difficult at times, is. you know. We also often hear the phrase, well, you need to forgive and forget. And that comes up. I hear that a lot. What's your guys' take on that? Because I think really the only one that truly can forgive and forget is the Lord because he tells us in Scripture that he casts it from the east to the west, right? What he do doesn't bring it up. You know, I, I don't know that God has the capacity to forget anything. But, but God prioritizes in terms of retrieval. Uh, he prioritizes um, things that have um, occurred by placing them under the blood of Christ, which means that they're hidden in, in, the, in the sense of being covered. So he doesn't bring them up. He doesn't retrieve them and use them against us because, because they're completely released. The debt has been completely released. Um, so, you know, on one occasion, uh, Jesus' disciples approached him. Peter said, Lord, how often should I forgive my brother who sins against me until seven times? You know, apparently the rabbis had been teaching that God forgives seven times. You get that out of the Psalms. Um, six times God forgives you, seven. And so with the, with the seventh after that, they have the uh, freedom to not forgive, you know. So up to seven times, and I say unto you, and seven times 70, you know, which is another way of saying completely. Mm -hmm. If your brother comes to you and says, I'm sorry, and asks for forgiveness, you're to forgive him. I think that part of our problem is, and it's very practical, and I can I can hear some of the viewers who may be listening right now who are right away saying, now wait a minute, how about? Because there are those there are reservations when you make a blanket statement like that. And and I and I understand that. But the the biblical uh, idea of forgiveness again is to release. Now if somebody has no evidence of genuine repentance, you know, somebody who's just saying, ah, I'm sorry. And we've all seen that because we train our children to apologize, but they don't always understand what they're apologizing for. And they don't even see the reason why they should apologize. If one of my bigger children hits the littler one, mm -hmm. and I say that you shouldn't be hitting the little one. Well, to a bigger child, it only makes sense to hit the littler one. Why would I go hit a bigger one, you know? <laughs> right. So that makes sense. Why should I feel sorry for dominating, for using my size to my advantage? That's human nature, right? So we, we have to teach them that there are reasons to forgive. There are reasons to apologize. And those are all part of what we have to train people in because that's something you have to learn to do. And so when somebody is injured, the, the first thing we do is we hold our injury and we, we, we almost protect it. And in some cases, it can become something that we use to our advantage. And I've seen that many times when people will say in a situation where they have, they have sinned or erred against somebody. And, and I will say, you know, we need to release that. It needs to be, well, you don't understand. Mm. When I was a child, this happened to me. And my entire life has been formulated around the defensiveness concerning this particular behavior because I suffered in this way. So it's a lot deeper for people than to simply say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, and we'll just move on and, and all. And so that's what makes forgiving difficult because, because the releasing is not as easy. That's why, when, that's why Peter said, uh, increase our faith. You know, that's why, because it's not as easy as you say. But if you don't, the parable of the debt collector comes to mind, you know, where a man owed another man some money, the man forgave him, then somebody else came and owed a lesser sum, and but the man said, I'm not going to forgive you, and threw him into the debtor's prison and all. Jesus spoke concerning that, that he was, that this man who refused to forgive, even though he had been forgiven, was placed into the debtor's prison, where he's going to remain until every penny is paid. In other words, he is a debt collector, and he's going he's gonna to remain under the, under the painful uh, burden of not knowing what freedom is and what release really is, because he didn't understand how, how that one whom he, he had owed a, an unrepayable debt, he, he didn't understand the depth of his own debt, 
because he was caught up with his own value and a real failure of, of understanding what he, had, what he had owed. And this man had owed God that sum. And, and God is saying, you didn't genuinely partake in forgiveness. You didn't understand it because to truly understand forgiveness is to learn to, to give it to other people. Forgive us as we have, you know, been forgiven. May we forgive others. You know, and that's uh, that I think is a big is a big part of it, John. Is uh, numbers of people don't know what forgiveness is. They haven't experienced it themselves to any degree. And to pray for yeah. them. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. I think that's brilliant. And to pray I'll for pray them. pray for you every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to, no, no, to pray and, and and pray, in a sense, for them. And, in a, in a good way, yeah. not, you know, not yeah. not like pray that you get in an accident, nothing like that. <laughs> you know, not, nothing, you know, it's not, but in sincerity, uh, you know, for them, Lord, you, you know, you know what they need, Lord. I have, I'm, I'm, uh, you know where they're hurting, and be with them, and bring, you know, give them courage, bring them, you know, bring them to church, bring them, uh, to <laughs> bring healing, them to, yeah, to a healing, healing, so come to know you, because I'll. Um, oftentimes, it's it's the world that that that, that can really hurt us, and uh, and they do need uh, healing, and they need to see what kindness is all about, and and uh, they need to be brought to, to to the Lord, and that's our desire is that He mm-hmm. goes. One of the ways I was taught this, and I think it's just truth to it. One of the ways to know if I have actually forgiven somebody is if I can pray for them. Mm-hmm. If I can pray for God's mm-hmm. best for them. It's one of the ways I know when I've really released somebody from their debt. Mm-hmm. Because if I can't pray for their blessing or their best, then I I haven't released them. And sometimes we, we will pray, yes, Lord, I thank you for being a just God, and you will send them to hell, you know, like the old <laughs> imprecatory psalms that we have mm. for David and break their teeth, oh God, and kill their children. Right. I mean, this this man, when he prayed for vengeance, he, he knew how to pray. So that, what Maria is saying, is 100% right on because, you know, that's when I've known I've released something. That's when I've known it, is when I've been sincerely able to pray for their best. Sincerely, you know. You know, one of the songs we used to sing in early Calvary days is be kind one to another, tender-hearted, uh, forgiving one another, just as Christ, for God's sake, has forgiven you. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's right. Ephesians that's 4.32, right. right? Yes, yes, absolutely. We used to sing yeah. that, you know. <laughs> and uh, But be kind one to another, tender-hearted, mm-hmm. forgiving one another, mm-hmm. just as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you, Paul said. And so I went to see a professor of mine on one occasion. I was really upset. And uh, I, I, I was bearing the burden of anger and unforgiveness. And, and my friend, uh, Dr. Moore, mm-hmm. my friend, Dr. Moore, uh, who was one of my professors at Biola, uh, had tremendous affection for Marie and I, mm-hmm. had tremendous affection for, for him. She, she, she eventually met him. Yes. But that's what he did. He quoted to me that scripture because he because I said to him I've got a burden I'm upset and I can't release it and he said you need to release it for God's sake because God Christ's sake forgave you I didn't receive it at that time John I walked out saying well that's his job that's what God does he forgives sin I was really that bitter because what Marie said earlier is true if you don't release you get bitter mm-hmm. and I was I was very bitter very bitter very angry but eventually what happened is that scripture came to life in my life. It, 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 it awakened in me, you know, that, that you need to release. Because when you do release, you have freedom. You really do. You're no longer mad when you see them or, or just remembering every time you see them. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see them. I don't want to be around them. They make me sick. And, and you know, and sometimes you physically can get sick when you see somebody, but when you release it into the hands of the Lord, and it's not, a, like you said earlier, it's it's not an emotion. I think that's where a lot of people make the mistakes. It's a decision. That's it's a nice. decision of the will, where you say, I will release this. I will not be in bondage to this. I will let it go. Mm-hmm. And, and if you have to do it every day 10 times, you do it every day 10 <laughs> times. Seriously. 
because you can get into the habit of forgiveness. It can become a mindset. That's true. Which in which in my case, mm -hmm. I think that it pretty much has. You know, again, I've been a Christian a long time, and when you get into disciplines and habits of the heart, and and that has pretty much happened to me. Not not completely, but very much so. Where if somebody has injured me, I'm much quicker now to to release it, just to say, you know, the Lord, it's in your hands, Lord. You know, but as for me, I don't want to. I don't want to carry this. I don't. I don't want to dread seeing them. All of us have been in that place, John, where somebody has injured you, and you see them walk in the door, and you. First thing you want to do is just walk away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You find a place to hide. Maybe mm -hmm. walk out the door. Don't look at them. Don't say anything to them. Ignore them, because you're afraid that if, if you if you see them, you're afraid that you may say something to them or do something, and so that that's an ugly way to live. That's an ugly way to live. And and one of the things that both Marie and I have learned, I can speak for us in this mm -hmm. one. Is God doesn't let you get away with that. Mm -hmm. he no, doesn't. he doesn't. He will orchestrate it so that person walks in the door when you're walking out. You can try walking a, around in the church. I'll go out that door, and that person be will right there. be over there. <laughs> right. That's right. And that does happen. And and you, you laugh within yourself, and you say, it's the Lord. He's, <laughs> he's not letting me get away with this. And so I learned that in very practical ways. I've, I've, I've learned that. He doesn't want me carrying a grudge. He doesn't That's want right. me bearing this burden because it hurts me too. And he doesn't want that in my life, you know. So releasing it is not easy, especially if it's a repeat offender, if this person is constantly. So there needs to be a sincerity in the, in the apology that I need to stand ready to forgive. And sometimes, and as you know, this will, and I'll, I'll kind of, just highlight this and then let you ask some more questions. But uh, sometimes the person who hurt you dies mm -hmm. and you never hear from them, I'm sorry. That happens quite often. Someone injured you, harmed you. There are young women who were molested by mm -hmm. somebody, harmed by somebody. Some, a, a man who has a little boy is harmed by somebody and just waiting for that person to admit it to say, I'm so sorry, and you know that would have released you had you heard it, and they die. How do you handle that? How, how, how do you never heard the I'm sorry? You never heard it. How do you handle that? Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that mm -hmm. part of forgiveness is being ready to forgive and releasing even prior to that person saying anything, because sometimes they never do. And if I wait my whole life waiting for somebody to approach me and say, you know, David, I hurt you and I'm sorry, then I, I may waste a lifetime waiting for something. But if I if I stand ready and, and I'm in an attitude of forgiveness and I've released the debt, though I haven't even heard the words, I'm better off because in my heart I've already forgiven them and those words are gonna just be something that come later on or may never come at all. So it's an attitude, it's an attitude of forgiveness, not just the act but it's the attitude of forgiveness where I, I'm gonna release this person of that debt even though they may never even ask for wow. it. You know, kind of just what you're saying, Pastor, <clears throat> on, my dad's, on my dad's deathbed, I had the opportunity to be next to him when he passed away. And I, I started getting this overwhelming feeling of guilt because here I see my dad dying. And, and moments before, uh, well, actually, a little before he went unconscious, uh, I was able to ask him for forgiveness because what really, really struck my heart was I may not have this opportunity again to ask. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? Now for my rest of my life, I'm going to be living with this. Mm -hmm. The guilt, uh, so the, the self, I mean, just how it affects our self-worth and our esteem. And, you know, there were some things I really, really needed to ask him for forgiveness for some horrible things that I've done to both my parents. And... Um, I, I don't want to get too much into it because I don't want to get too emotional about it, but I can understand what you're saying is that um, that opportunity to never be able to ask or to receive that forgiveness can be something that just destroys the heart and, and what it does to the person, you know, to never have that closure or to never have that 
uh, that ability to say that. And so I think, again, it's not an emotion because emotions come and go, right? It's, yes. We know that. It's, a, it's an attitude of the heart. And, and the Bible tells us to stand ready to forgive. Uh, what does it look like for you both, not in, within your marriage, but in your pastoral care experience? When somebody has asked for forgiveness from the other person, and I forgive you, but yet when there's an argument, that's the first thing thrown in their face. Would that be considered true forgiveness? No. Not at all. No. The, the Bible says in Romans 13, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 13, that love doesn't catalog, doesn't keep a record, you know? And so if I really, if, if in marriage or relationship, um, you know, the blood of Christ wipes away those things, it, it blots it out. And so, no, if I'm running around still carrying it in my heart, I haven't released it. And uh, if somebody has to bring something up to me later on, well, you always, mm. they haven't either, you know. And so, no, that's not true forgiveness. True forgiveness is the release. It's the letting right. it go. And I think that one of the worst things that you can do is to keep reminding people of what they've done if they've sincerely said, forgive me for what I did. You know, we need to remember that in marriage, two sinners got married. Right. You know, there wasn't one perfect person. There were two imperfect people. And um, if I've hurt other people before I met Marie, I'll probably hurt her too. And if she's hurt others, she'll probably hurt me too. Human beings hurt each other. And so you can't enter into a marital relationship expecting to be free from pain and differences and 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 we had our share in the early days of our marriage you know and I, I i think that there's always a potential for us to to do something to one another or say something to one another that's hurtful to this day human beings being what we are we're capable of doing that but we've also i i would say in our relationship we we've learned to let it go a lot quicker you know yeah yeah, I come from a, 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 a long line of grudge holders, you know, <laughs> yeah. My mama could remember things that were done to her when she was a little, little, little girl. And she pretty much imparted that kind of ability to me, you know. And so it, it was a lot of work for me to, in the Lord, to learn to release and to believe that people really are sorry when they say it and to accept it and then not to bring it up and not to say it. It took a lot for me to learn to say, this is not something that we'll repeat. We'll not talk of this again. My kids can tell you that when they grew up, I had learned that. I had learned it by the time they were old enough to willingly do things that they shouldn't have. And I would say to them in this conversation, uh, this is the last time we'll talk about this. And that's a fact. We talk about it, Daddy, I'm sorry and we reconcile whatever needs to be reconciled, and we would move on. And uh, all my children can tell you that's how I handle them because I would tell them that we're not going to bring this back up. One of my favorite quotes is from Ruth Val Graham where she said, uh, every cat knows that some things need to remain buried. <laughs> and I think that's true. <laughs> you know, that's good. you just leave them where they are. You know, leave it alone and, and move on. Right. My life is too short, John. It may feel like it's a long life, but it's not. Our life is too short that's right. for us to be carrying grudges and anger right. every yeah. day. That's what I appreciate working with you, Pastor. I, there's things I've done that... Uh, oh, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> You all check off this one, this one, this one. Uh, I appreciate uh, because it can be difficult, especially when you've, uh, you know, you've disappointed our pastor. You know, in situations like uh, that can happen, and the fact that you just deal with it and then it's done and let's move forward. Move on. And I appreciate that because that's taught me doesn't need to be rehashed, doesn't need to be revived. And I think a lot of times in marriages that can happen. Oh, that course. it's the same thing. It's like okay. This, we're forgiven, let's move forward, but there may be one or the other that they want to rehash it or they want to bring it back up. And I think there's a maturity, a spiritual maturity when you're able to say, let's just move on. We got bigger battles to face together 
than to separate from one another, you know? And I think that's important. And so you modeled that in my life, that I'm able to take that back into my marriage and, and in my other relationships, that if there is something that has happened, uh, let's deal with it and move on, you know? And I think that's huge. I think so. Well, that's, it, it's like the Lord. It's, it, you know, there's no, tra- no, no uh, disagreement God can't fix if we allow him to transform our lives. Um, and, when, and we need to just leave it, forget, you know, forget what happened. Um, it's been, I think that's the hardest thing for most people yeah. is, is the forgetting, yeah. and they do want to bring everything back, and, um, and they use it on each other. But that, that, that isn't a good thing <laughs> to do. It can it's destructive. It's, it's destructive. very destructive. I see that a lot of times when people, uh, they use the term forgive and forget. Mm-hmm. There can be a the forgetting part mm-hmm. can seem like, oh, you, it's just an excuse that you've mm-hmm. excused it or kind of accepted it. Where then again, being in the flesh, you're thinking, no, we want you to pay for what you've done. If I forgive and forget, I've given you a free pass. Well, it's kind of forgiveness kind of works that way, right? We do get a free pass in a sense that we need to release that for the other person. But allowing that pseudo forgiveness to take place in a marriage, how dangerous or what are the dangers of allowing unforgiveness to linger in a marriage? You get a divorce. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you eventually divorce. Mm-hmm. They may look elsewhere too mm. for a, a mate. Mm. I'm going to find somebody. Yeah. Somebody who, who doesn't or yeah, who, who doesn't treat me like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. That that'll respect me. Or Jesus referred to that kind of attitude as hardness of the heart. He said, this was allowed because of the hardness of your hearts. They were unwilling to forgive. They were un- unwilling to let it go. And Jesus said it was a hardening, you know, because remember that argument that they posed to him concerning uh, divorce. Is it, you know, lawful to divorce a woman for just any cause? And Moses, um, you know, commanded, you know, Moses permitted. It wasn't a command, it was a permission because of the hardness of your heart. Um, Because you are, human beings are capable of of rejecting the right road and doing the right thing. You know, if it's true that the Holy Spirit is, uh, produces the fruit of love um, and gives to us the ability to do all things that are necessary, through the power of Christ, why can't I forgive? Mm-hmm. Why can't I release it? You know, if, if, if you know, that, that's a whole ministry of Christ. I mean, you remember the story where those men brought the, the friend to him in Mark 2, and they lowered him, and, and Jesus sees this paralyzed man on this mat, and he says, your sins are forgiven you, you know, and and who is this, they said, that even forgives sin? That's what God does. See, that's the whole issue, is who is this who forgives sin? And so is it true that the Bible says that if I confess my sin, he is faithful and just to forgive me my sin and to cleanse me from all un- Is that true, that he'll cleanse me from all unri- unrighteousness? And then somebody says, well, yeah, that's what First John 1, 9 says. Okay, then. If he forgives me of my sin, why won't you? Why won't you? You know, who is this that forgives sin? You know, and it's Jesus Christ. He says that you may see that the power, that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sins. He turns to the man. He says, which is easier to say, get up and walk, you know, or, or your sins are forgiven you. But you may see that I have that authority, get up and walk, which he, he, he took the spiritual, which is forgiveness of sins, and he made it practical with that miracle of walking, because now that man is going to walk in freedom, freedom from sin, from the burden of sin. And so we need to see that. And so people can lie on a mat, and they can stay crippled if they want, or they can get up and they can walk because they've been forgiven by the one who forgives sin. And that's in marital relationships, right. too. I, I can keep Marie in bondage and cripple her, mm-hmm. cripple her by reminding her of any disappointments. Mm-hmm. And if I do that often enough, she will not blossom. 
she will not she will not produce fruit i will dominate her eventually she'll do one of two things either she'll wilt and ultimately die or she's gonna just leave me because she can't survive under that kind of person any longer and so love bears all things mm -hmm. and and love doesn't catalog all sins and so the whole issue in forgiveness is going to come down especially in marriage is related to the love that we have for one another do i love this girl and with all my heart and if i do why would i harm her and mm -hmm. why would i keep her prisoner when jesus came to set her free why would i do that and that's how some people control right that the woman who will control the man you've always done that we've we've mm -hmm. known too many Absolutely. you've never you've always been that way and you've never and and the guys mm -hmm. honey i do the best i can i'm you know what, what else do you want from me well you just have to prove to me that mm. you really are why who are you that i have to prove this to i already asked god for forgiveness i asked you to forgive me i'm moving in a different way do you want me to keep a list of all the ways i'm different now so that you can go over those lists and say, oh, you're not, you're not, you're not. And that's, that's, I've seen that. We've seen that. Well, we've seen it like you're not like so-and-so. How oh, come wow. you're not like so-and-so? Why don't you treat me like him? He treats his wife. Or, yeah. We've seen a lot of that. Yeah. Blaming one another. Yeah. And controlling one mm -hmm. another. And very often the woman will say, well, I don't get what I need here. I'll go here. Mm -hmm. And the husband is rooted and grounded, he's developing relationships, he's growing in his walk with God, mm -hmm. but she doesn't get what she wants at the church she's in, so she goes to a new church. Mm -hmm. And after a while, she goes to a new church, and she just uproots and uproots, and he goes back to his old old ways after a while, because, you know, yes, very true. I have no friendships, no relationships, you know. And we've seen a lot of that, John. Can you imagine, you know, how many years Marie and I have been together in ministry mm -hmm. and how many how many times we've seen those things i can't i can't tell you how many i can't there have been so many where they just won't let go they just hold on and they're angry and and then they hurt each other with the words and and they don't release them and a long time ago the holy spirit reminded me that i married a, a girl he called his daughter this is my girl, my daughter. I've never forgotten that voice in my heart that was very real when he said, this is my girl, don't speak to her that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very really, I've had a lot of them when I think about that. God sometimes has been very gracious to make it very clear in ways that were tangible, where I, I'd hear and then people say, oh, he's crazy, I always thought he was crazy, but <laughs> no, it's true, where I hear in my own heart, I'd hear those words. And I still remember when he said, that's my little girl, don't talk to her that way. I've never forgotten that. And I looked at Marie in a different way. And we were young, we were real young then. And I looked at her and I go, I hadn't thought of that. This is God's daughter. This is God's daughter. <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk to her like, I was just angry, raising my voice as, as some men can do. And I did, you know, and the Lord said, that's not how you speak to her. So I get my, my, my cues from the Bible, God's word, but there are very deep experiences that you can have over a lifetime where it solidifies the things that you've been reading and you say, that puts teeth to that. I, oh, I see what that means now in a different way. And so sometimes that still small voice we read about in scripture is still a still small voice in our own heart. There are times. Not always, not every day, not every moment, but there are times where his voice will ring into your heart, whether it's a scripture that comes to mind mm -hmm. or a sense of a voice that says, don't speak to her like that. And I can give you biblical verses that said this, this is a daughter of God, you know. So it just is like God just setting that in. Not everybody goes through that. And I'm just trying to emphasize right. that what we do is we understand who we are. And this is his daughter. And I have no right to, to not forgive her when he already has. If she went to him first and said, God forgive me a sinner, who am I to say he forgives but I don't? And it works vice versa. Of course it does. With us too. Right. Of course Many it does. women can 
treat their husband and badly through the words they 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 say to them and uh, never build them up and and uh, we need to build up our husbands um, they're the prime providers of the home we need to build them up and encourage them they need they need to see that we love them and that there's no other and um, we've been blessed we've been, we, we have been, we've been very blessed uh, I think so yeah. you have <laughs> <laughs> I have. I have. <laughs> you know, one of the things that uh, you, when you guys were sharing about this, there are people out there who have uh, who don't want to give for uh, they don't want to forgive because they want to hang on to that mm -hmm. because sometimes it's the only thing they know or the only thing that's comfortable for them. They don't understand that releasing something is literally putting their trust in the Lord and maybe even putting their trust in somebody else by forgiving. And so. Sometimes I can see that they don't just want to give because it's something they only know how to do, is hanging on. And it can be a controlling thing, too, as well. Um, but I like what you said, Pastor. It's releasing. It's an act of releasing. Praise God it's not based on emotions, you know, because uh, if it was based on emotion, you know, a lot of people wouldn't be forgiven. Right. And I also like what you both said. Who do we think we are when we don't forgive when God has already forgiven us? Are we now taking the role of God? You know, when we don't want to forgive people, especially our spouse. You know, that's that's so important. You guys already touched on these last two questions. How important is forgiveness in a marriage? And how does one practice forgiveness in a marriage? I think you both already mentioned that it's the releasing and having an attitude to always be ready to forgive. And that's something I can maybe just add to this. Is this something that's already prepared in your heart? Lord, I know I may get burned or I may get hurt. Is it something that's already planned and prayed for? Or is it something that you already have already? Okay, if they for, if they hurt me, I'm going to forgive right away. How, how do you go about that process? I never thought he was going to hurt me, you know, uh, for me. So... I I think it's a natural thing when it. I feel blessed to have my husband, for who he is, and he's been a good uh, father and a good husband, and so I I'm I'm completely blessed by him, and I've never felt that he was going to hurt me, no no never, no. Mm -mm. In our relationship, yeah. I believe that yes, love. Never. That the love that we have for Christ and one another yes. has set a tone for all the other things that go on in that. And so we, again, Marie and I, you know, we, um, when we got married, we, um, as we've been saying quite often lately, came from different backgrounds, you know, and we had to learn to adjust each other's ways. and. Yes. And we have, and we yeah. did. Yes. But it took a while. It was. It wasn't it quick. It was over years because you get married. That's one thing. You have a baby. That's the second thing. Yes. Then you have another baby. That's. Then you have a house that you buy, and then, you know, all the pressures and all the stresses and and all the changes. You know, um, Marie became a different woman with each child. I had a different wife because she was a mother now to one, now she's a mother to two, now she's a mother to three, now she's a mother to four. And, and me, I'm giving up my wife to each one of these kids. And I'm adjusting to the fact that she doesn't want to be with me because she has to be with him and her and, and all of those things. And then I'm, I'm under the stress of having a job and she had to work and our bills and all of that, all the pressures and both of us had a, a lot of pressures that, that everybody has when they first get married. It wasn't unique to us, it was just us. And, and we, we, if we weren't prepared by, by the things of the Lord, by, by uh, trust in God and our faith in Him and, and a, um, a, men, a mindset that nothing will separate us. Because when we got married, that, that the, we, we married with one attitude, we both had it. This marriage is going to last no matter what. Mm -hmm. we, we did not enter in our marriage thinking, well, if it doesn't last or whatever, 
I, 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 we neither came from neither of us came from the background that that for us that not making it was uh, an option. It never was. So when you when you enter in, kind of that old saying of you arrived on a boat, but you burn the boat so you don't get on it and leave. When you arrive on that, as we did in marriage, we burn the boats behind us. There's no escape. Our vows are to God and to one another before these people, which we married that way. And there's, we aren't going to make it. There's no way we're not. And so, and, and, and we're going to be happily married. We're not just going to be married and mm -hmm. kind of like put up with each other until we die. You know, we're going we're gonna to make it and we're going to have what God wants us to have. When you have that kind of attitude, and then you encounter problems. And, 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 and again, you know, everybody has different kinds of problems. You know, whatever you bring into your marriage is what you brought in. You may have a background of something that you brought in that, that it's a harmful memory. It's a harmful thing that caused you to be a certain way. I respect and understand that. But that man and that woman who decided together in Christ that we're going to make it, we're going to get married and, and had some minister and had those witnesses and signed that contract. Mm -hmm. All of that means something. Mm -hmm. All of it does. And so, yeah, Marie and I, we, we, we got married and there'd be differences. Sometimes, sometimes they may be so petty that why are we so upset, you know? Because right, that right, happens. Yeah. You forget yeah, especially when you're, when you're younger. Them. Yeah. <laughs> she made tacos one time. Oh. And she made it with cinnamon. <laughs> accidentally. Cinnamon, I accidentally. Because it was red. And she thought it was chili. chili. You know, and we didn't have yeah. money to buy any other meat. <laughs> it's it's like a churro taco, right? Oh, that's <laughs> not so very good. I'm not happy about that. So what am I supposed to do? Pout and cry? Or, or do what I did. I got some water and washed it off. Yes, we had to wash it. <laughs> and we warmed it, it up and we ate it. We had to eat it, right? So those are little things or some major things. You know, we, somebody can hurt each other in a, in a way, in whatever way. Say something cruel or, or be unkind. You know, I just, I just, I'm a Christian, John. I, I, I think the Bible is, is right and it's true and and I'm a sinner saved by grace forgiven by God and I believe that I, I you know that's what I've been preaching for many years why wouldn't I apply that to this woman that I'm married to why wouldn't I why would I not why would I not apply forgiveness if needed I can honestly say this and I'll say it openly and people don't have to believe it but it's true that Marie and I don't really go through a bunch of garbage anymore. We, we don't, we have our ups and downs, a little irritations, I guess. But they're so small, I, they, we, we don't even have to say, honey, forgive me. We don't. It's not that we, we wouldn't, it's that we, we've worked through so many stupid things that we just kind of accept each other and our, and our weirdnesses that we have and me more than hers. And the tensions that, that I can go through in the line of profession I have mm -hmm. and the burdens I carry, you know, and she's learned to, to bear them with me and to let me deal with whatever it is I'm having to deal with. She's learned to do that. So she doesn't expect a perfect man. She expects a man to work things out according to the way the Lord works and she trusts that he will and he does. And so we don't, we, we, I, we, we don't really argue and we don't really irritate each other that much. We just don't. And even if, even if we do, it's so, it's so fleeting that who cares, especially as we're growing older, because we are, I am much more aware that every day I have yes. is a gift. That's true. And I'm aware of that, John. You know, every day with this woman is one, one more day. And I am aware I'm of happy it too. With it. I'm not going to mess up my last days. I'm not. I'm going, to, I'm going to be a good husband. And that's what I did. As a kid, I didn't understand that. As an adult male, an older man, I do. I do. And that prompts me. That makes me a better man. Because I don't want, I don't want her not to have good memories of me. 
I just don't. And that, that motivates me. And people don't understand that. Not everybody does. But it's true. I'm right to tell you the truth. That's right. It's, 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 I just do <laughs> the best I can. And we've been blessed beyond measure. Okay. We really have. Ah, we have. Yeah. Well, you guys, thank you so much for giving us practical insight and and the ways that forgiveness works in a marriage. And and uh, and you guys are truly always an example to many of us who are married. And a lot of the things that we that marriages go through, we it, we're so blessed as a church to have our pastor and Marie to, as a couple that we can model that that work hard every day to be like Christ. And so thank you guys for that and, uh, and for giving us practical application on forgiveness. Thank you guys for watching and God bless you. We'll see you soon.